I'm here. Hello, welcome back to Masquerade the Vampire. We're finally here to I don't know, beat up someone. She thanks the chauffeur and lets me out of the car into a quiet neighborhood somewhere in Queens. We're in Queens? Seems like you were in a rush. Seems like it. I couldn't stand the crowd. She's honest, properly performatively so, I just to get into my good grace. Well, it's working. <laughs> Great. And why is that? In my experience, gatherings all those always enable boring pack mentality. All the familiar lines we tell ourselves to justify lasting for more repeated ad nauseum. Uh, what lies are you telling yourself? Yesterday you said. <laughs> Yesterday you said! Uh, I'm quite confident she's gonna betray us. <laughs> I don't know why. And what lie are you telling yourself? Aurora immediately turns colder. You have a bigger issue to worry about, sweetheart. I guess you're right about that. And uh, well, at, the last, at least now I know how familiar I can get with her. That I do. Back at Atoll, you say something about guiding me, but I have zero idea what to do. None whatsoever. So I guess that dialogue was meaningless. Had a few necessary arrangements to make over the phone before we got here to ensure your pretty little hand stays attached to your neck. For now, anyway. I'm grateful, but I still feel a, a way out of my death. I need to know what to do. Used to make a living as investigative journalist, did you not? Investigate the murder. And it also lead me to my own uh, undemise, so... Not so sure about that. In TV shows where an investigative journey gets too close to the heart of the political incendiary case, it rarely goes well, a cat's head on the porch, a bullet to the head, you know, the usual. So, are you afraid you might be poor in a game you don't understand? That your urges consider you a disposable asset? That a single wrong move might cost you everything you hold dear? That sounds about right, actually! <laughs> yeah, pretty much! Well, by the sound of it, you understand your situation perfectly. <laughs> I was like, okay, god damn it! <laughs> don't belittle me, I need your advice. Be ready you want, but don't be boring, Julia. If I wanted a belittle you, I would have drowned you in a platitude long ago. Know thyself, believe your strength, trust no one, are confident, turn the chessboard around and read your opponent's mind. Re Sun Tzu and quoting insensitively, say, do you feel any better now? <laughs> I actually read it. I actually read it. It is not much, actually. It just, imagine a lot of war, quote about war. The problem is that you're not going to be a general in war. <laughs> The best way to do war is not do it at all, you dumb fucking shit! <laughs> it's extraordinarily expensive! People die for no good fucking reason! <laughs> you lose money out of it! <laughs> Can I ask you something? Seeing as Mia is still not here... Of course! Mia? Uh, do you know who killed Baron Callahan? I haven't the slightest idea, okay. Were you emotionally impacted by his death? <laughs> not at all! You probably hated him. You know him? Only passingly, I'm afraid I expect him to perish sooner than later, so I never bothered to improve our relationship. Fair enough. Actually, he's quite understandable. Why are you <laughs> helping me, then? Am I? That remains to be seen. What do you mean? You do not want to painfully honest answer? Uh, but I do! <laughs> I do! <laughs> she stares me down, her irrelevant tone makes it impossible to guess what she's feeling. Even more so than the mass. When I look at you, I see someone pitiful. Someone whose hunger is purely biological. So just an animalistic rush. When I saw a bourgeoning plan. To put you in a situation that is way beyond your capabilities, I offer my help. I was curious to see your true colours reveal themselves first hand. <laughs> when everything is said and done and Callihan's killer is pointed out, will you be whimpering animal or a victor taking the spoils? Cannot wait to find out. So, you're curious if I will succeed or not. I don't know what to say, is she provoking me or... Mia should be here any second. You have time for one more question. That <laughs> was Mia. What makes you important? What do you do <laughs> What do you do to hold so much sway over this city? I have the best occupation in the world and I make sure nobody is better than, uh, at it than I am. <laughs> I'm gonna kill all the competition like that. And the occupation is... A socialite. Okay. Oh my god! No, it cannot be. No! A socialite? 
Do you think it's the Latina girl? No, it cannot be. A socialite. She uh, kind of makes sense. It could make sense if you think about it. Because uh, Thomas definitely hires someone to take care of this situation, right? To make a, 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 a zumbo. Uh, a zumbo, yeah. To, to intermingle with, uh, with Sophie Langley. Sophie Langley was a socialite, right? And uh, they're probably going to need a substitute for Langley, right? So they give it to her. I believe. Am I wrong? And that was your last question. Direct the rest of them to her. A woman around my age emerged from around the corner of the street. Hello, Mia. Never met her before. If I had to describe her into words by her aura alone, I guess those words will be permanently angry. Even more than your average anarch. You must be Catherine Weese. Yeah, you must be Mia Morgan. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is mutual. This is your girl. Julia Sawinski, the Lansobra Primogen. Lansobra representative. I correct her automatically at this point, it's a habit. Good, if you were a Primogen, I might have, I might have to try to kill you here now. Is uh, Torki still on the side? So, is Torki's fine? He managed to escape. Now I told him I'd take it from here. By the end of tonight, he needs to look like a natural candidate for the leader of the New York City Anarchs. It's gonna take a lot of driving around in negotiations. How did he react to Fanny Callihan remains? He hasn't exactly elaborated on his feelings, but I expect he reacted the same way every true believer in the cause did. It's a complicated mess of all the possible feelings under the moon. So he was the first one who seen the murder site? Oh, so you're already calling it a murder site? Does the ivory tower know something we don't? It's not it's not the official position, but it's but I expect a lot of them think it's Tokyo stood to benefit the most from the boss death. He sounds like he's quick to jump onto new opportunities. You don't know him? Yes, but uh, I'd love to meet him and ask him some questions, especially if he has uh, the one who found the body. Well, if uh, you are meeting Tokyo at all, don't be tonight, he's too busy. Interesting. I was assigned to investigate, I won't be able to do it properly, if not able to question a key witness. I arranged for him to see you this week. Okay, this week aren't the tension a little too high for delay investigation like this. Well, Turkey's work is our best shot at making sure they won't get higher, so boo fucking who. I mean, it's right hand woman, though you got any questions, you wrap them to me. Maybe the two of you should just head to Callihan office. The discussion here does not seem to be going to the right direction, no in particularly interesting one. You're coming? Toki and you are not the only ones who have their work cut off for them tonight. I trust you can take it from here. And Mia, be easy on her. I slightly defer. In a slightly different circumstances, I expect the two of you would have ended up on the same side of the barricades. Uh huh. Take care. Bye bye. She heads by to her vehicle. Well, follow me, I'll show you his place. The 19th century style office. Classical, wooden, smelly, the stuffy air of books, all furniture, and dust covers. Much the fragrance of decay, but not all of it. Okay, stop with the zooming, it's irritating me. This is the first time I've seen the remains of a vampire who has met a final death. I heard stories of really old kindred crumbling to dust. Yes, that's what I was actually curious about. But that's an exaggeration, at least it didn't happen here. When Kinder die, times catch it up with them. If you offer me right now, I'd probably turn into an ugly, leaky corpse. But Callihan was well over a century old. He's like looking at that vapor mummy. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a hundred. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever remains, the hair remains? Really? After a hundred years? Maybe it's not even his own hair. Seriously, can you stop moving? A desiccated body is heap of musty clothes. All that is left of the mighty boss, Douglas Callihan, Anak Barrow of New York City. If that's really him. Needless to say, it might be a little hard to establish the time of death or the course, especially as his scrub doesn't have any obvious damage. What a great place to start. Well, we are dealing with uh, a vampire anatomy, right? So isn't that a little bit hard to bet? Have you already found any suspicion? Nothing you don't see in front of you. Uh -huh. So they didn't interact with anything. This door is the only point of entry to the room, right? Yes, unless you count the windows, but don't be expert for Kalin knew how to operate those. They don't let air or light through. Metal blind blinders on the window facing east, the only modern element of the room, sing out like a sore thumb. They look automated. Was the door open when Toki got here? Well, that's one suspicion thing. It wasn't. 
it as if Kali unlocked himself from the inside. Okay, worrisome. Uh, so, what happened with Toki and Mia? <laughs> I thought Toki wanted to kill Kalihan. A close room murder. Hmm, interesting. I think they probably come up with a deal with, uh, with each other, probably. To deal with Toki and uh, Mia. I mean, they were the closest one, so weird. There's some glass cut on the floor, I pointed at it. Could that uh, be the form of the window? I checked it from the outside, it's a perfect condition. So, what's up with the glass? I have no idea. What does it seem like she has her suspicion but is remain uncooperative just because fuck off Camarilla scum. <laughs> I checked the next point of interest, I will save surprisingly large, enough to feed a body in it. I play with the lock a bit. What's the combination? It's Kali Hans, what makes you think I know? At least I tried. Desk with nothing but an envelope on it, and nothing inside. Check all the drawers, every single one has been truly emptied. I don't know what I expected. It. Is this how the Anarchs go around, securing crime scenes? Were these empty before Toki arrived? I don't know, but I would accuse him of tampering with evidence if I were you. Well, thank you. The core of the room is pretty minimal, so there is not a lot of points of interest that could illuminate this case. I start getting nervous. It's probably a secret uh, entrance. I point out the painting on the wall. Of course, you have uh, no idea who that is. Kalihan Sasser, I guess? I'm out of idea, everything I look so feels like another dead end. I'm frustrated, I feel like I failed this investigation before I even started, which kinda makes sense. There must be something more. I start walking around, trying to find a single clue. Mia just watches me indifferently. Give me anything, anything, goddammit! Anything, any, any! A shadow blinks in and out existence, near Kalihan remains, a freezing place. Are you trying to help me? <laughs> Are you trying to help me? But you're mumbling. In case you missed it, I'm not particularly fond of your sect. It doesn't seem like me a notice. Give me just a moment. More. She grows under her nose and goes back to messaging someone on her phone. When she doesn't, the shadow appears again. Hello, shadow. Once again, shadow baby. <laughs> Once again, blink, blink, blink out. Could, could something be there? I push the clothes and start searching them for a clue. For me, they miss something. Okay, the desperate, huh? That's being true. We searched the bastard like three times, he had nothing of interest on him. How about this? Small card barely noticeable. <laughs> a small card barely noticeable, looking a bit like a shopping list, it shoved deep into an almost invisible hole in the fabric. I take it out and show it to Mia. Huh, you didn't plan there, did you? No, did you? Shove it off, what's on it? List of four names D'Angelo, Hope, Agatha, and Tamika. Huh. Any idea what this is about? It's me. She's lying, but I don't care. Tomorrow night I will meet with Kadir and ask him to help me figure it out. I think I'm done. I'll let the door hit you on the way out. Guess she seems see Guess she seems me sees me as nothing more but an enemy apart. Agent apart. What the fuck? When will I get to meet with Toki? If, and that's a big if, he will agree to meet you on a one-to-one -one basis, Catherine will let you know. He probably won't let your loyal Camarilla lapdog like you see him without her oversight, anyway. A Camarilla lapdog, huh? It's a risky play, of course, and it might backfire, but maybe I benefit if you put my loyalty to the court in question. Camarilla lapdog, please. Well, aren't you? Trust me, I'm not the type who buys the hand that feeds her, but the court's favorite pastime is uh, leaving me starved. Ah, so it's like that, huh? Yeah. I got an achievement! I got also a trait. What the heck? <laughs> Loyal only to myself, Julia Trait. Tra yeah. He study me carefully, and will keep that in mind, depending on how the situation unfolds. Good, in the meantime, have a good night. You too. It's getting late on uh, ill. <laughs> or early, depending on how you look at it. Once I leave Kalihan office, I head straight to Dakota's apartment. I don't trust anyone. <laughs> I don't trust absolutely nobody. The only person I trusted is dead. <laughs> I tried to sneak by my bedroom, but uh, she's up waiting for me. How was your night? Oh, shit. <laughs> Tomorrow. What happened? You look like something. Something the cat dragged in. Tomorrow, I promise. But I'm worried. Don't be tomorrow. She gives me a concerned look, then closes her eyes, slumps her shoulder, and frowns. Alright, you're the bash. 
I reached my beach black room and got myself on the bed. The responsibility is those things the way I always fail to slow to rap properly in these situations. I want to think. I want to turn off my brain. I want to drift into the void. Into the void, into the void, into the void. Jesus Christ. Uh, hello tutorial. It's a bit late. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it's been quite a, a few episodes. I received your first trace. Some choices in the game will push Julia towards different ways of thinking, which will have a lasting effect on her throughout the story. You will see a brief pop up on the top of the screen at any time you receive a new, tra a new trait. You can always view any unlocked traits in the log screen, access to the top left icon. Now that the ruthlessness in is the mark of a true Lansobra, you might walk another path before reaching their destination. Where is them? I always thought you you'd be make you make it big. You make it big. Get real TSS or just using me as a pawn in some stupid four-dimensional chess game. Wow, she's so aware of it. As opposed to just keeping you off the chessboard, don't be a glass half empty bus kill. What? Be a glass half empty and what? Watch them make me scapegoat or something. That would be exciting. I could write a book about living with the 21st century. Lee Harvey Oswald. Come on, don't even joke like that. I haven't killed anyone. Still? Julia, honey. Neither did Oswald. Yeah, right, I keep forgetting. Stop wrinkling or it'll mess your face up. Sorry. I've always been the way she's busy when you make me again. It's hard to take care of your appearance, especially your face when you cannot even see yourself in the mirror. Okay, this is bullshit. Not that I've ever been a particularly good at it. Dakota doesn't seem to mind, and uh, her good dress up though. Her presence in my own life is one of the few good things that my sire provided for me before fucking off to Chicago. Okay. So she went to Chicago? Normally I'd be told to find the myself a ghoul, but many of my clients, myself included, find the idea of ghouls disdainful. Fair enough. We're cat people, not dog people. We don't want mindless, faithful servants. We want companions who rely on us, despite having, in theory, anyway, the free will not to. The kind of relationship I have with Dakota will normally be breach of the masquerade rules, but the rules are different. For Kindred War, come a real agent, a loser like me. Makes sense. I mean, you cannot really apply a law on something if you are willing to dispose of them. Uh, simplifying here, uh, but my sire made it clear that her childy will will not own slaves, and I will stand of the discussion. Fair enough. To be honest, I think that the core mostly agreed to that request because they wanted one more thing to blackmail me with, just in case. What will you do in my place? If I had to investigate your elites who are on the doings? Yeah, I'd probably look for those rich fucks pedophile rings. Look for the asshole who mentioned pizza suspiciously? Often, a uh, see who has uh, powerful friends in Manhattan jails, stuff like that. Oh, come on, now I'm serious. Search for the deep rot, and a lot of smaller crimes will get solved in the process. What's that with you, and your conspiracy theory? Yeah, what the fudge? What do you mean? You just told me your bosses are having eyes wide sharp parties, and suddenly you don't believe in rich people pedophile rings? <laughs> oh no. I don't know, I don't know. If I want to know, my point is. You are as if all the conspiracy theories are real! Like you cannot possibly believe all that shit. Half of it doesn't even make sense. Well, you want an interesting answer or a real answer? A real one. Should be more interesting one. She moves her brush on my face and gather her thoughts. Everyone lost nowadays. Just look at the world, this drowning fact that failed to cohere into a single convincing narrative or a story that resonates. I agree with that. <laughs> The corporate media wants you to believe in empirical thinking, but it always fails to deliver moral or metaphysical truths, and the people desperately lack those. So what do they do? They turn to conspiracy. Yeah, and suddenly they are able to navigate the world, and why is that? Because conspiracy theories give them emotional truth and serve as a compass. Emotional truth, huh? Is Bill Gates trying to insert satanic microchips into my body? Probably not! I <laughs> sure hope not! Now, is he a terrible person? No idea, but there's ample evidence that might be the case. It's in his ruthless business strategy, the company he used to keep, the philosophy he follows. People look at him uh, and they feel that he's fishy. So when the media present him as a genius or a savior, and I post that he wants to put the mark of the beast in my body, they choose to believe me. Fair enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> I honestly do not care the last, to be honest. Oh, it's the savior! I uh, still don't give a shit! <laughs> still don't give a shit! <laughs> because it makes moral, emotional, and metaphysical sense to me, and ultimately, that's what matters most then. Guys, uh, about this conspiracy theory, don't you think it's a little bit expensive to create microchips and install them on people? You know how fucking expensive is this? We don't even have graphic cards at this point. We almost run uh, running out of it. I'm just saying. I mean, at least make it believable. And you think people will give so much a shit about you or what you think? Really? <laughs> really? Really, Broski? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to engage with contents of this rant too deeply. You came out with a monologue yourself, huh? Oh no, I read it on Facebook. Oh, great. Facebook, huh? Figures. But just to make sure vaccine vaccines are okay. Well, as far as I know, they don't cause autism. <laughs> Good to know that. <laughs> what the fuck? Microchips. Anyhow, I'm done. You're the best. Yeah, consider how many times I've done makeup on a dead body. I probably have enough job experience to be a mortician by now. You do? Oh, that sounds like an exciting career, but in reality, it's probably the most boring thing under the sun. Yeah, like, <laughs> someone may argue against it, okay? I like my corpse talkative, pouty, and self loading. Oh. My favorite type of corpse. Shut up! This carcass will be leaving now. I got like, a job to do. Get him, <laughs> go and get him, tiger. First thing first I need to do, meet up Kadir tonight, report to him, I hope he knows how to guide me out of this mess. He should have time for me in an hour or two, in the meantime I suppose it's time to find some, what's the most dehumanizing word I could use here? Nourishment. So I actually need to eat. Kadir told me that I need to quench my hunger less often if I didn't smoke. It kills you, he said. But to start killing itself, the organism must pretend it's alive, and that uses a precious vitae. Well, I love cigarettes. The way they smell, the way they burn, the hot ash falling from the top, the sound of the lighter, the way they kill you, of course. And I guess I need some tactical connection of who I was back when I was alive. Okay, New York City, guide my steps. Show me which one of your children I should drink up tonight. What? Oh, it's uh, her. It's the reporter. It's, oh yeah, it's still. Uh, I wanna check on her. It's the first. Uh, it's the first character we met that will uh, human character that we met that, that allow us to drink blood. I forgot her name. Was it uh, uh, Sophie's favorite? She's Sophie's dad. She probably uh, a little bit free for all, I guess. No blood, no matter how squeezy it is, we're suffering through these hours. Something terrible must have happened to the previous DJ. It had to be sudden and expected for them to hire an amateur under the wire. Zero ability to read the crowd, no sense of flow, as if that constant flashing wasn't migraine inducing enough by itself. Not that I remember how an ordinary had spills. I know the hunger though, which is why I'm here tonight. A purple hair girl bump into me, head down, tears flowing down her cheeks, and trembling as much as I understand it. I don't think it's the guy at the turntables that made her like this. Oh, better fat girl. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I. She bowls before I can say a single word. Well, who I am to blame her. A tactical retreat probably feels like a good idea. The trace of cheap booze in every potential vessel is faint by ever present. At this point, a smell is all I'm getting come to this of it. I can barely remember how alcohol tastes. Maybe I should remind myself. Nah, that's done. Uh, that's by pretty much free of people at the moment. Hmm. Get okay, to take a peek at the drinks menu. These are some goofy fucking names, especially from, from a kindred perspective. <laughs> oh, the bloody Margaret, a vampiro? Put the menu back. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go with bloody Margaret. But and this brings me a large glass of garnish with a celery stick and filled with something that looks more like a veggie shot than a gin-based cocktail. I'm far from thrilled. <laughs> Fuck it, here it goes. I chug it down and in one goes, it tastes like canned tomatoes. Someone opened and left rotting for decades. I quite confident, don't you, don't you, don't everything taste like shit? Somebody tells me I'm gonna regret this soon. Very soon. The music, yeah. the music abruptly stops just a step away from the bar. I can see the boo, but the crowd's reaction tells me all I need to know. 
Looks like we have a new DJ! The vibe immediately improves. Hallelujah. A pleasant moment never lasts, so while we're now to it on the front side of 40 decide to heat me up. Our eyes meet for a brief moment, slightly too late for me to outmaneuver him. Strangely, there is no lust in his gaze, and yet he seems like a predator close in on his prey. Could it be the rumor of Diva's delight? A kiss addicted clocking me as a bloodsucker? Where war man? How come you are here all alone, sweetheart? I cannot pinpoint exactly what it is, but there is something irksome in the way that he carries himself. As he approaches me, I begin to feel fatigued, like there was a sudden drop in atmospheric pressure. Tell him to piss off. I give him a purely faith hateful glare, but I find it weirdly strange to keep my eyes on him for longer than a few seconds. There's something about him that ruins the little composure I have. I think he knows that. I feel I feel spiders growing in my spine. I think he's a hunter. I is there something wrong? He'll let me. Hands off, asshole. Oh damn it. I can barely focus on his eyes, but he frees in place for a moment. Hey Stallion, how about you bother that guy? He struggled with my cow. Chaotic command and gives me an unsettling look, but in time he seems to do what I wanted him to do. He approaches some meathead, we meathead he turns hostile. The meathead first punch and breaks the guy's nose, and no way to see the second one. As if meeting that asshole didn't stream enough, an accurate feeling rises in my gut, instantly making me nauseous. Nauseous? I think it's. I barely make it to the nearest empty lounge before it became violently throwing up. For a meter straight up, I spray the couch with the remains of that wretched cocktails is not a pleasant sight. I call myself as soon as my stomach empty. Shit, Julia. Your life has, uh, <laughs> has had more than the fair square of avoidable embarrassment. Is it necessary for you on life to follow suit? Yeah, if I'm not wrong, you c I cannot consume food, right? Time to bail and not look back. Right before I reach to the next, the purple haired girl from the early pumps to me once again. This time I know it's not coincidental. Wait, please. She seems startled but gives me a pleading look. I thought I, I saw what you did to that man. Are you um are you one of them? What are you talking about? Who's that? He bears her teeth and taps the side of her neck. Oh I get it. So yeah the diva's delight. She brushed her instantly like I just caught her stealing cookies. That yeah, sounds silly, I know, but I thought I thought I would attract some of you know, some of your kind. Always being told that it tastes good. Would you would you like to try? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it made me so much laugh. I really taste the good. Would you like to try? Sure, I do. <laughs> she looks at me at the same way Junkie, who hasn't had his hit for a while, looks at us syringe. You know too much. There's no way you don't have a pattern of some sort. Her eyes tear up again. I do, but maybe I don't. I don't know anymore. He shows up whenever he wants, then disappears for weeks. I don't. I don't even know his name. You were supposed to meet here tonight, but so I am alive. Because he didn't show up, the girl keeps talking now that the, he she has found somebody new to open up to. An instinct she might have had to remain a secret is gone. Makes you wonder who thought it was a good idea to breach the masquerade for her. Before him, I used to have a caregiver. She was one of the divas too, but she was so exceptionally noble. I think she cared about me in a way. She always complimented the way I taste. Would you like to try? <laughs> Would you like to try a sample? She clings to my eye like I am Jesus Christ! <laughs> And Kirk Combain at the same time, sent her from a heaven exclusively to turn her misery to bliss. I cannot help but feel some at this day. Please, I promise you, uh, you won't be disappointed. Uh, no, I won't be. I'm too hungry for that. But I also like to pretend I'm something better than that, hungry from time to time. Uh, feeding. The hunger gets the better of me, but somehow I don't mind. This is what she wants, isn't it? A quick look around, nobody's paying attention, why would they? We were just two random girls who seems to, <laughs> to be very into each other. Gently grabbed the back of her head and put my lips closer to her neck. She invisibly trem trembles with excitement. As I bite down, her body softens. Then I drink savoring each sip. She really tastes incredible. Like unfulfilled promise. Sweet, sweet innocence. <laughs> as soon as I'm done, she loses her footing, weakened but doubly relieved. I proceed down the floor, she smiles at me, joy glinting her eye. Thank you, that was really... I really need that, my, 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 my aim is... Don't talk, just rest for a while. Leave her alone in this state of place, she doesn't seem to mind. Looks like I did the right thing. <laughs> it looks like I did the right thing! She probably needed it, right? <laughs> I leave the booming sound of the club behind me and get on with my night. So, I guess we switched, right? Okay, well, let's see. The note left on my old dead drop point reads, Banya's reporter, shit, could it be Woods? No time, no see. What does one of 
one do one that goes of Christmas past knocks on her door. So we know about uh, we know this reporter, which is interesting. Samir asking me to meet her. If not uh, for ongoing celebration, the partition will prove our choice or seek random. She's hoping she can provide me some useful insight into the case. Uh, I'm actually more curious about meeting Samira. A King Cut staff member dies in an impeccable company uniform smiling at me as the elevator door opens. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, meeting someone. And he may see his question with an apathetic shrug. He sized me with a, a brief moment, visibly questioning my fashion sense. However, his professional acumen quickly trumps his discontent. Very well, this way, please. New York City, Nouveau Riche. Seem awfully hungry for gourmet soup this late of night. The Patrician is packed almost to the brim. The concierge points me over the last vacant table, conveniently situated in the far off corner of the main hall. I nest in the chair, letting my elbows rest on the ornate tablecloth. Watch out, of Livius white collars. There's a black weed on your midst. Well, I'm here. Might as well just kick back and die of boredom. <laughs> yeah, I really, really need something to occupy my mind. Call the coast here, figure out why somebody asked you to come. Have a smoke and examine the place. Uh, have a smoke! The potential atmosphere gradually began to creep under my skin, straining my mind and dueling my awareness. I take a peek into the trustly, my trusty medicine pack. Two cancer sticks left. Oh, just two? Damn it. I question lie one, paying no mind to the scornful looks of my <laughs> of nearby patrons. The or envelope this place is suffocating, everyone here seems so incredibly tough nosed. I say we're destined for greatness by sheer virtue of their boot. Ace and graces everywhere you look. An abdomed hamster cage where everyone is trying either to suck up to their betters or get their ass kissed by over eager underlings. The fact that I found this so apathetic is probably part of the reason why I never amounted to anything. C'est la vie. As I take another whiff, I notice a well groomed staff member at the manager, I guess, kissing me from uh, behind his horn rims. He's competent enough to keep up appearance, but I can tell he's on the warpath. <laughs> I gradually put out a cigarette. I think I know why he's staring at me like that. She's fine. Put out a cigarette on a false looking Indian candle. Folder in the middle of the table. The manager returns to his usual matters. I wonder what he would have done if I stuffed snuffed the cig out on the table code instead. Oh, shut up, Julian. You are not 70 years old anymore. For better or worse, you are eternally stuck in your 20s. As I continue to scan my surroundings, I notice the concierge answering a phone call and fr frantically jotting down a note. Good, get back to your work, buddy. As the thought of leaving crosses my mind, he glances on me briefly before hanging up. The concierge quickly closes on me, dancing habitually between the tables, and addresses me before I can even utter a single word. Excuse me, ma'am, are you Mr. Sawiski, by chance? As soon as I nod, he hands me a carefully folded manner and leaves. For how quickly he scribbled it down, the nose is impeccably calligraphed in reds. The manager of this establishment is sold to the Camarilla Authority. It is. Wait, 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 wait. The manager of this establishment is sold to the Camarilla Authority with his negligence. If at all it's minor, his transgression must be penalized. Why like you assist me in this matter? Okay! Such a display of goodwill on your part will surely improve your standing with the hires up. Chose an appropriate, not a little punishment, ass. What is going on? <laughs> Imagine the guy that just wrote it down. It's like, uh, it's like, uh huh, punishment, okay. We we want to not kill him, okay. Not kill him, okay, perfect. Not lethal, mm hmm. <laughs> I wrote so many stuff, dude. What is this disappointing? I was high hold uh, to expect any help with the investigation. I guess instead, just another chore. Best I can hope for it that is really just a friendly request and not a deliberate attempt to derail my work is early in the game. <laughs> ah, damn it. Might as well get it done since I'm already here so I can move on with more pressing stuff. As Bruce approached the manager and tapping on the shoulder, he follows his bro brow as soon as he noticed me. Yeah, it's the manager that stopped Agathon, right? I'm afraid I'm busy one of the waiting staff should be able to. Have something to discuss the VIP lounge now, if you please. He faced loses color, maybe it was down on him that I'm even paler than the other, more blue blooded guest. He immediately becomes complacent as I scold him throughout the side door. 
their room isn't empty, but the guests are just leaving. Nobody pays me any attention. The manager is as polite as he can be. As he sees the patrons out, but I can see he's a clearly losing shit. So he knows. He knows. He quietly asks me one of his staff to give him five minutes in the lounge, and gingerly closes the door behind him. Then the bleeding starts. Listen, I know I screwed up. I shouldn't let him in. How could I know he's uh, not one of the proper clients? I don't give up. Listen, hey! I will never, I implore you, I have children, for Christ's sake. There must be something, an arrangement, a way to... He just goes on and on as if I'm not even here. With each subsequent whimper, he becomes more and more irritating. <laughs> Lash out, explain. <laughs> just shut up for a goddamn second. My outburst finally makes him hold his tongue. I laughed. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> I laughed out the last sink in the package and take a slow puff trying to composure myself. I have no use for your explanation, justification, I don't know what sort of transgression you committed. I should never have let this Sansa Rick guy in. And truth to be told, I don't give a shit. It will never happen again, I swear, on my mother's grave, just... I'm not that good as judge of a character, but I, him bleeding with his arms out really makes him look like a biblical... Wayward son, swearing to change his way. Flash <laughs> out. Flash. <laughs> Just punch the face. Ran him. He grab his hand and tightly grip palm up and take a puff of rekindle the burning tip of my cigarette. He doesn't fight back. You and I both know they will want to prove that I gave you a lesson. You won't forget. So I hope you realize that this is mercy. I put my smoke out the palm of his hand, the accompaniment of his unmuffled screams. His eyes become watery, but other than that, he takes this like a champ! <laughs> if I have to come back to this shittle, the next one will go right here. I look him in the eye and crashly flick his eyelid before taking off. <laughs> Damn, gangsta! I didn't know I was capable of this sort of cruelty, but here we are. Karen warned me that something in our bloodline finds sniveling weaklings detestable. Is that what triggered me? But that's a conundrum for another occasion. I did what I was asked, and I sure as hell wasted enough time here and should move on. I wonder what happened with Lash Out. Do I simply punch into the face? <laughs> Boom! I'm quite confident that he let in someone that he was not supposed to let in. And I'm guessing it was Agathon. Alright, it's about time to head to, the, to see Kadir. Mighty kind of him to arrange a meeting at the place that was convenient to me. Oh, Jesus Christ. D'Angelo, Ho, Tamika, and Agaton. I suppose that's better than nothing. But no evidence, really? Honestly, it feels like if someone had already cleaned up the most egregious stuff before it arrived. You know what, guys? I'm gonna enter right now, right here. I know it's a bit earlier, but uh, I really need to do something I forgot to do. And uh, see you again very, very soon. To the next one. Ah, 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 lovely man. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry! Bye!